All right, hi there. Good to see you once again on my channel. Um, this is the Graceful Comfort Channel, and today on one on one, I'm also happy to bring to you a wonderful guest. All right, today I'm going to talk about um, a short um, note I have in this uh, devotional, Becoming a Marvel. And a friend read it and he was asking if we can take the topic on one on one. And today we're going to take that same topic. The topic is the influence of a mother. We all know the importance of mothers in the family and nation as, as a whole. So we're going to take a look at the whole ideology about the influence of a mother and what the mothers can do to either make or mar their children. Help me with, make welcome to this special guest here in our midst, Evangelist um, Jua Japrim. Japrim. All right. So I'm going to take uh, one minute to introduce Jua Japrim to you right now. Still to give a life to Jesus, receive the ability to connect to that delivering power of God to bring you out of that addict, to bring you out of that dungeon, and to give you the expectation that you are also a champion. You can be the cave of Abdullah and be a brooded king and be a chief also and become the best leader in your family, the best leader in your ministry, the best leader in that department, the best leader in that endeavor. Because I know that I know that when I become, I can do all things through him who straighten me. All right, welcome back. Um, here is Jewel Japri. Jewel Japri, say hi to the audience. Thank you, beloved audience, and thank you for always being there. I know you've been following Kifi Doroji all the way on YouTube, and yeah. it's really been good. Mm -hmm. There are lots of topics she has handled before, and this is just a new one mm -hmm. that is adding to the many. Please, if you're not subscribed, just as I've already subscribed, do that, please. <laughs> And I believe that this particular topic we're handling today is going to be wonderful. God bless you. Thank you so much for that wonderful word. All right, guys, so let's go straight to business. So the topic is influence of a mother. So, Mr. Joel, what can you tell us about the influence of a mother? Well, this topic today, it's very critical. Uh, we had to go over other topics to see that this one has to overpower others because mm -hmm. influence of a mother mm -hmm is really and daily needed in our communities today. Actually, if you notice the way Nigeria is going now, the influence of the mother is needed. Let's go back to terminology. Uh, influence is the ability to control, the ability to infuse, the ability to also be able to contain mm -hmm. or to probably uh, there are some that are having to do with um, transitive and intransitive or those those grammar stuff that are mm -hmm. also involved but then influence has that ability of being able to control a person or a thing to arrive at a dis dis destined or designed or a predetermined uh, conclusion without which influence also has that ability to bring about a result that the person that is influencing has a, a, a clear directive or has a clearer view of where that result is going to end. Mm -hmm. So that is like a consequential or a, a, yeah, a consequential incomparable because you don't know which will turn out at the end. Only the person that is influencing that's already seen where the influence is, is or the good. influx or the induce is going. Yeah. All right, that's very wonderful. So now we understand what influence means. So this will take us to understand why the mother is uh, very important as an, as an influence in the life of a child. And remember that each and every one of us was once a child. So most times we behave the way we may have been induced by our mothers, our mothers. while we were growing up. Yeah. For me, for instance, I know that some things I do, I know I pick them from my mother or I watch her doing it. So mothers can actually influence you directly or indirectly, right? Exactly. exactly. So we're going exactly. to take a few examples that Mr. Jewel can tell us in elaborate form what the influence of mother can be. So Mr. Jewel, I like to say something. Okay, in this book I mentioned that mother is the first teacher of a child. Yeah. It means that that what a child learns as they grow up is what the mother induces to them or what they watch her doing. So what can you say about that? In our African homes, 
our mothers are our first teachers. From the time a child is in the womb, mm -hmm. the nine months of a child in the womb, the child is learning already from the mother. And so the child comes out already influenced, whether we like it or not. <laughs> so the nine months in the womb is already a big time for intimacy yeah. and also to glue them together. Mm -hmm. Now, when the child is delivered from birth till the child starts going to pre nursery, mm -hmm. all of those primary mm -hmm. stuff, the child already had influence directly from the mother, being that the mother has an affinity with the child. Mm -hmm. And so the influence is always there. And it's, it goes for everybody because the closeness between a mother and a child is so close that influence is allowed. It's allowed. Okay, <laughs> so it's, allowed. it's not, for me, I don't think it's allowed. Influence is, is just natural because they, they are your closest pals. They're your first body, body, they're your best friend. Before you grow to choose a friend, your mother is already the first best yeah. friend. Yeah your director, your teacher, yeah. your confidant, and yeah. so on and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So the mother actually influenced the child in so many ways. All right, so I'm going to take another point from the Bible, all right? Okay. And an evangelist, and this is a living channel, all right? Yeah. So the Bible, I always get confused. Why? Why would Esau's mother do what she did? I mean, you know, Rebecca, she had two sons. Why would she want some, one of the sons to take the right of another? That is influencing the child to be manipulative or she manipulated the child. It's just total deception. So why would she do that? This is what any mother can do today. Well, that's a very good example. When we use Bible examples, it's because we're drawing the people to the source. Yes. Because the source is the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, last time I mentioned something about precept and concept. Mm -hmm. Precept is the original idea. Okay. Concept is the idea in picture form in our mind. Okay. Now, when we have this example of Rebecca influencing Isaac or uh, Jacob to turn out their destinies the way we read it in scriptures today, that influence from the part of Rebecca. Mm -hmm. I will be very careful to say this because we have to be very careful with what scripture says and what scripture has not spoken. We should be silent okay. about it. Okay. From the beginning, when she was pregnant, the prophecy already came that two nations are in her womb and that the younger mm. is going to be the boss yeah. and that the older will serve the younger. <laughs> now, all that she did, all that Rebecca has put in into the lives of those children, it was just like someone on stage. Okay. She will do it just to realize that, wow, she has just played out exactly what the prophecy had long said. And then, the influence that we can talk about her, there are, ne there, there are negative influences, there are positive influences. If we see influence in that light, we will better understand what really influences, because that's really the point we're making today. There are good influences, good induces, good control that parents or mothers exert over their young ones, over their children, and mm. over other people as well. Mm. There are also very, very negative influences that parents, parents exert over their children mm -hmm. or even uh, words in the house. Mm -hmm. There are house helps that parents can influence them or a mother can influence that house help and the house help grows up to be a wonderful woman. Yeah. And there are influences that a woman can exert on a house help. Mm -hmm. You will wonder whether that was the devil. That's it. <laughs> that's just it. That's, that's it. Alright, All right, so, so you're trying to say um, that in this case that she was just playing a role. She was playing a role. And uh, we want to see that she had an influence over Esau. She also had an influence over Jacob. But her influence over Esau is little. Her influence over Jacob is very much because Jacob was really the administrator of the home. The day-to-day -day running of the house and care of other things that are running in the house. She, he was very close to Jacob and her influence with Jacob would be very much intimate. Her role in influence in the life of Jacob, well, it's two way. It's positive, it's negative. But as the Bible will want us to put it, we learn the lessons from the bad side and we correct it into the right side. Well, for me, I don't like, uh, I don't think I'm a very happy person or whenever I read that story, I just wonder, why would the mother do this to one of her child, one of her children? After all, they are both your children, and this person, by birth, 
reserves the right to be the first one. Why to rob him of it? If you just say now on that um, she was playing a role, well, it means she was playing a role that was being prophesied in the past. All right, so if that is the case, like you said, you don't have to question so many things within the Bible. Job, I just, yeah. I will try to let us just leave it, all right? So audience will just leave this particular topic. He have just tried to make it clear to us that she was playing a role and that she also had influence on the, both sons. Just that, That's evident. Just, just that uh, maybe one was closer to her and then she, maybe that one was too close to her heart and she has to play in a way that suits him better. All right. So, but what we have to say about this other woman in the Bible? This other woman that had to ask her daughter to ask for the head of John the Baptist. Okay, that's Herodias. Yes. In the Gospels, uh, Scripture makes all what we read in Scripture to see if, if is it a testimony, mm -hmm. is it a story, is it a historical background, or it is actually a teaching or something that the writer or the, the person speaking is saying it directly. Now. What we read about John the Baptist, his arrest, he's been locked up, and then Herod's birthday, and then Herod is coming to the scene to influence the daughter to ask for a very difficult thing from his from her own father as a birthday gift. It was an influence that is very, very huge, and it was a big loss to the body of Christ. That influence is the kind of influence that we see it in the intransitive form the negative the one that is by force you compel someone by influence to make a decision mm -hmm. and then the person makes the decision and it turns out in your favor and in the other other person's disfavor completely because the destiny of that daughter after that incident we don't hear about her again in scripture One we don't hear so that influence that this girl had to go through mm -hmm. from the mother demanding for the hair of John the Baptist. It was a very, very negative influence. It was also an influence that has costed the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. If Jesus had needed John the Baptist longer, mm -hmm. if the disciples of John had needed him longer, mm -hmm. knowing that John the Baptist was in the rank of the prophet mm -hmm. of Elijah, mm -hmm. as Jesus told the crowd, that John, you don't know who you are. You're asking me to deliver you. And you are of that realm where you can speak and things will happen. Mm -hmm. But he was still thinking that the Messiah has already come. He has to be gentle and also has to go under his influence as well. Yeah. But then we're getting back to Herod, Herodias' influence on the daughter. It was bad. If mothers today will want to influence their daughters, they should influence them in a better way, in a godly way, in a way that is gentle, building them towards morale and building them towards heaven. But influencing your daughter to kill or to demand for the killing of someone mm -hmm. or influence that brings about bloodshed, influence that brings about derogatory act, uh, activities and attitudes and characters that build into generational hatred is totally a bad influence. Mm -hmm. I tell you today in Nigeria, mothers have this nation. Mm -hmm. Mothers have this nation. If mothers are so close to their children and they believe in their children, mm -hmm. if they're so close to their children and they know that they are the first teachers of their children, mm -hmm. their children will want to confide in them. Mm -hmm. They will also be the confidants of these children. Mm -hmm. And with excesses that we have, the mothers can call them to attention. The mothers can call them to order. The mothers can do the good influence. But we have come to not just a country where we need that kind of godly influence we have also been in a church we are also the body of christ that we also need the influence of godly mothers in our homes in our schools at the marketplaces and in the hospitals at the workplaces offices we need the influence the positive influence of mothers so having heard what you just said now why i smiled last time was because i was wondering with the way Nigeria looks right now, would you say the mothers of Nigeria have failed? <laughs> because if mothers can influence the nation, and knowing how our nation looks like, could it be that our mothers or mothers of our leaders failed? Well, Nigeria be as it is, um, the mothers are doing their best. But I think their best is not yet the best. Yeah, it's not good enough. If we know that the best is still to come, mm -hmm. then we're expecting recent mothers 
able mothers that will add to the voice of those that are already doing something mm -hmm. and that way the influence might be increased mm -hmm. if we cook a pot of soup mm -hmm. and we put just about five cube of maggi inside mm -hmm. it may not be sufficient mm -hmm. but if that pot of soup has sufficient ingredient ingredients mm -hmm. to really give us the spice we need in that soup mm -hmm. then we will achieve it so nigeria needs more mothers to influence this nation the right way nigeria needs more mothers in the church mm -hmm. more mothers at home to give the godly influence we need all right so another thing i have in this book is um the book of proverbs 31 verse 1 to 2 says the words of king lumel an oracle that his mother taught him and it goes further to say what are you doing my son what are you doing son of my womb what are you doing son of my vows it is so because the mother is responsible for teaching the child the way of the Lord and the way the child should go. Would it mean that the mothers of all the irresponsible children, for instance, the children who are into kidnapping, mm. that who have turned to men now and are into kidnapping, or children who left school to go into um, gangsterhood, so would it be that the mother failed, or the mother may have sounded this way to them and said, "What are you doing, this son of my womb?" But they failed to listen because this is the king saying what his mother taught him. That means the mother taught him the right way and she tried to stop him when she knew she, he was going the wrong way. What can we say for the youth of our time now? Does it look like the mothers have failed? Scriptural declarations are very powerful. When the king, like this passage she just read, is expressing and mentions <coughs> who I have born from my womb. And that you have turned into what is not my expectation or my influence. Mm -hmm. It's a declaration of regret. Now, scripture, be it as it is, it is very eminent that every home has the influence of both the mother and the father. If the children have only the influence of their mothers and the influence of their own father to bring about a balanced child is missing, Mm -hmm. We would not throw blames at the mothers. Mm -hmm. We will not blame also that maybe the mothers are absent and the fathers are taking over the responsibility and we blame the fathers that they are overshadowing in the home. The best, the best home comes about when the two parents have the influence over their children and so they raise balanced children. Not one being too much and the other being too low. At least let the balance come. Let the children have the balance of the influence of the father, the balance of the influence of the mother, and then they are also balanced in their, in their own upbringing as well. Mm -hmm. That's probably what was lacking in the home of Rebecca. Mm -hmm. That Isaac is going his own way, Jacob is going his own way. The other one is a hunter, mm -hmm. always in the bush, mm -hmm. looking for fresh games. The other one is at home, doing home administration. Mm -hmm. And then, probably it was God's will that the birthright shouldn't go to a hunter. You should go to an administrator. Because how will you wheel your entire generation and the entire Israel to the mind of a hunter? Probably that's what God saw before it happened on the stage. Mm -hmm. And that is the prophecy. So no game, no blame games for whether mother or father. All is that we can, beginning from today, pull together to see that we bring a balanced home, a balanced influence on the children. All right, thank you for that answer. Okay, I have one more thing for you. You see, there is something called um, this influence on the mother of the mother based on favoritism. It means the mother prefers a certain child in the family. It could be the last born, most times it's the last born male child, or it could just be the second born male child, something. She just prefers a particular son to the others. She could put that son in a more expensive school or tend to buy him more toys. Do you think that influence or that can influence the child to behave wrongly? The generation today has brought about the plethora of choices and they keep increasing every day. Now, in upbringing at home, if we desire to put children at school, the family plans as a family and the family work towards it together. But if the influence has to come with that kind of way that the mother decides that this child goes to the boarding school and this child goes to the community school in the village then that influence is going to be very much affecting on these children mm -hmm. one will see as if i'm not loved the other one is will see as if i am well loved 
who are not welcomed. Yeah. Maybe uh, they, they got pregnant of me out of will, out of ill luck, something yeah. like that, and that kind of uh, antagonism in the future. Uh, such influences should be guided so that we always strike at the right balance and we also strike at the right thing that we desire of. Mm -hmm. They all need sacrifice from the parents. Mm -hmm. If the mother has to influence a child, the sacrifice you give for that child determines the kind of weight of value that child will have for you in the future. All of these things happening in the society comes from the home. If these people that are bad in the streets, that are doing all of these havocs, if they come from homes that the mother still have influence on them, the mother can call them to order. The mother can go that sacrifice. The mother can be the confidant of these people that are doing all of these perpetration of evils and call them to order. But because they have grown and the generation has grown to a stage where as a child turns 13, discipline is now a crime. As the children turn ages, uh, some even 15, 17 and so on, they just want to be on their own. They don't want to get again the values and the teachings that take them in that rung of life. And so we keep having a repetition of pleitoria of problems. And we cannot blame this on the school teachers because the school teachers bring them from the home mm -hmm. and they try to manage what the children have from their homes. We can also blame it on the mother alone or on the father alone. Let everybody wake up and sit to the responsibility. I'm sure we'll have a society that scripture talks about. All right, so after the short break, we're going to talk more about the good mother and the bad mother. The good mother being the mother that needs to show that the girl child stays at home and learns the duties of a girl, and the bad mother that encourages her child to bring in the money, even if it's through kidnapping or internet fraud. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, just after the break. There are leaders that historians follow them. There are leaders that journalists follow them. There are leaders that people, believers, even unbelievers, they follow them because they have discovered something in that leader that is part of what their aim is. That is part it's part of what they are looking up to. It's part of what they want to achieve. And so that way they follow the leader carefully because the leader gets what it takes to take them to their result. The leader has what it takes to bring about the expectation. The leader has what it takes to bring about that action that is needed. Sometimes the action is now, now, now action. That leader has it. And so the people key, they follow that leader because they know that at the end, the leader will deliver. At the end, the leader will connect them together and so they will achieve the expectation. And so the law of connection has to do with connecting with the leader to have the delivery of the expectation. The law of leadership also has to do with uh, inconsequential uh, arrival, inconsequential or consequential, incomparable uh, arrival of an, uh, of an endeavor. And so they arrive, and so they get it, and so they have it, and so they can say it is our own because the leader has helped them through to get it. Hallelujah. In the time of Jesus in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, we heard how he was a great leader who connected very well. So principles help us to know that the originator of this law is from Scripture. Because in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 13, we see how Jesus, he picked common, uneducated men. And uh, with the time he was with them, he was able to connect. He was able to brood in them what was not in them. He was able also to bring out the best in them. And these uncommon leaders today that we see them as apostles birth about the ignition of the revolution of
I'm going to see you. So before the break, we're talking about the influence of the good mother and the influence of the bad mother. Because whenever we have a good, we have also the bad. Understand, but you know the bad always sells more than the good. So let's start with the bad mother, all right? Because the good mother will be very short. What is there? The good mother is good, but the bad mother, oh, a wide range of stories to tell about bad mothers. And the point is, there are so many bad mothers that these bad mothers that don't appear bad, but they are actually very, very bad. Yeah. And they never get to agree they are bad. They don't, I just can't imagine it. I've seen mother, terrible mothers, and I'm wondering. This person is not qualified to be a mother. She just gave birth. So maybe mothers should also understand that being a woman or a mother is not about just giving birth. The idea of being a mother is to mold a child, to cater for the child, to ensure the child becomes a good child. That is why you are a mother, not just to go to the theater and give birth to a baby and feel like a woman has children. No, it go far beyond that. So let's see how these bad mothers, we've seen two examples already from the Bible, but let's use our everyday example. You know, the everyday example is always very interesting. Because you see this man here, the evangelist, when you ask him about the Bible examples, he always have interesting things to tell us and convince us why we shouldn't just go there. It's the Bible. So now he's going to tell us about the day-to-day -day women we see bad mothers that we see. And I mentioned the bad mothers who actually ask the children to go bring the money. Go bring, just bring, they just bring the money and they eat it. And you know this child does not work. But because they are bad, naturally bad, they don't even care. So Mr. Jewel, evangelist, the teacher, the theologian, he is the body of so many things. And that is why we're always blessed to have him. Alright? So he's going to tell us, yeah, very grace of God. So he's going to tell us now, what do you have to do on so to, to remedy or to make sure we don't have many more of them in society, mothers that encourage their children to go rob because they know the child carries gun, but they're not interested in the gun, they're interested in the money. What do you think is the reason? Was it that the, bad, the mothers were exposed to such fathers or such mothers to make them not say anything wrong when their child is so openly going the wrong way? Okay. Um, the society now has too many things to handle at once, sincerely, too many things. If you mention about killing, you mention about hacking into people's accounts, you mention about all of this uh, kidnapping, you mention about all of this... Prostitution. Ah, too many morality. It's just too that much. Political means. Even the political that has added to it. Exactly. That is even a foil, an influence to it again. Mm -hmm. So the society has a plethora of too many things happening that are actually bad. Now, the question she's trying to put to us is, should we blame the mothers mm -hmm. for all of these things? And the, what have they done, if we are to say they are bad mothers who are responsible for that? What have they actually done that has brought about the influence on these children that have turned these bad? Well, truly, we will not escape the fact that we have some mothers, some mothers that are bad. We cannot escape that. The children themselves, sometimes while I'm teaching at school, some of the children will tell you what the mother is doing at home. Sometimes when we're teaching Sunday schools in church or having teaching seminars or outreach programs in church or even at the societies, you will notice some children come up and openly say, Pastor, my mom used to do like this. Oh, my mom is doing that. Oh, my mom doesn't have time for us. Oh, this and that and so on. You see that sometimes if these mothers know that that job one day, you will leave it. Or you will lose that job one day but then these children you will have them always you will need to create time to see that you develop not just the children develop yourself if you know right in your heart that you have some influences that are not good and you desire really that you want god to help you from those influences because you know that those influences have not just influenced you bad and you're being sent or tacked as a bad mother we have already gone as far as infusing these things into your children know that you need an examination of your own personal life and they see to it that after you are doing that or while you are doing that try to bring in the right influence on the children because when people are counting on these children that are the future generation 
that the leaders of tomorrow, as we are always using that slogan, you discover that we lack in these children what it takes to build the generation we are thinking about. Mm -hmm. The pastors have always emphasized, just like I heard from Dr. Paul Enenche, that the future of this generation lies in the kind of people we produce in this generation. So we should not produce any kind of specie, <laughs> any kind of cockroach, any kind of and expect that this generation be given to them. Mm -hmm. It will just be like a cake of explosive mm -hmm. awaiting the, 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 the detonation. Mm -hmm. So mothers, if you know that you need something that will really bring you out from those bad attitudes, bad immorals. Mothers have, if you see, we are just, just we are just closing up. If we open up what bad mothers are doing, is it, not, is it maltreating of house helps? We have seen house help that were chained in the toilet for days, even some for months, by a mother. And that was even a girl. We have seen children that their mothers have sold them for money to the, to the price of even 200,000 naira. Yeah. We have seen children that even their own mothers have strangulated because they don't have food to give them again. Many things have happened even to children and even to these mothers yeah. that we cannot say let us hold the mother or the bad mother responsible or let us salvage the situation. All of them need just the savior. They need an emergency theater situation. Sincerely. You know what you just said and that just reminded me of this recent um, prison break in Imo yeah. State. The federal prison was broken and the prisoners escaped. And why I said it is, I, I learned of a mother that escaped she was in the prison and I asked why did she escape why are you talking about her that man and they said that she was beating her daughter she did she she died she locked up her door and beat her 18 year old child young woman she beat the child until she collapsed and she kept beating her until she couldn't move and then she sneaked her to the hospital and then she realized the child was dead a mother, a mother, a mother. Bad mothers. But the good bad thing, mothers we talked about, they are yeah, really much. They are much. I've seen a, a, a mother remove her high heel and is hitting the child on yes. this score with it. Too many things. I've seen a mother remove knife and cut off the manhood of the husband. Oh uh, yeah, mother. So, that is what do we, what is it we have not seen in this generation? Uh -huh. So all of these are influences that are in women that we just pray that God saves them so that they just change from it yeah. and receive Jesus truly in their heart and believe that their sins might be forgiven if they're genuine the and they make heaven because yeah. the situations are just getting out of hand yeah. and the influence is just getting too fast because the children are doubling, tripling, quadrupling what their mothers have been doing. Yeah. Some children grew up in a broken home that they knew the mother is a terror. Mm. If any time you refer to their mother, it would just be like a sour food on their table. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have anything to do with their mother because they've experienced the sharp part of their mother that they will for a whole lifetime never forget. Yeah, so talking about broken home again, you just reminded me again about an incident. So I have this young girl who has become um, my my daughter, my yeah. close friend, yeah. because I found her on the farm and she has been of tremendous help to me. So the next time she, I found her, she, she was trying to tell me about herself because she got used to me. And I asked, so how is your mother? I asked, how old are you? She said she's 14. I said, wow, I was giving birth to you many years ago and you have been much even older. Mm. And I asked her about her mother's age and she said her mother is less than 30. And I was like, excuse me, she said her mother is less than 10, and this is a mature girl already. Yeah. And I was wondering, so why are you here? Where is she? She said she's in Port Harcourt. So where's the father? He's in Lagos. So why are you here? Well, because she wants to be here. So as she grew closer, she began to tell me why she was there. She was there because she's coming from a broken home. Mm. That was the reason in the first place why the mother is in Port Harcourt yeah. and the father is in Lagos. And I so what now happens? She could have stayed with her mother, right? Yeah. But now, her mother's boyfriend, who is trying to marry the mother is trying to take advantage of her. Oh. And these are oh. shameless men that we have every day in society. We're going to talk about men someday, mm. by the way. So, going back to that point, so she says that when she complains to her mother, 
that this man is trying to touch her. She shush her. She's like, what are you trying to say? Nobody's going to believe you. Don't say that again. And these are mothers we have, at least thousands of them in this place and all over the world. And that reminds us of Joyce Meyer's um, yeah. story, how the father was taking advantage, advantage. Of her, and the mother couldn't do nothing, mm. and she kept quiet, even knowing that that was going on. Now, this young girl is able to avoid that the same Joyce Meyer's life story by saying, no, I can't be in this house. And that was why she was sent to the village. Mm. If she stays there, no doubt in future we will have another bitter woman who is going to be aggressive and bitter because she feels all men and animals and they take advantage of young women and stuff and then she ends up not telling us or perhaps she has guts and boldness like Joyce Meyer she could tell us how her father molested her or her stepfather is molesting her well her husband have been stepfather but that is almost the same thing this is supposed to be the father figure in her life and he's trying to do that to her and when she failed to oblige him, he tried to do it to her younger sister. From bad to worst. Yeah. <laughs> so, that takes us back to the point that a lot of mothers sometimes see things going wrong and they fail to correct it. It's true. The book of Proverbs says that the failed child does not bring, sh bring shame to the mother because I wonder why they didn't say the father or the family. It says the mother. That means that women are actually very responsible for what children turn out to be. That's Proverbs 14. Okay. A, a womb, a, the home is mm. built by the hands of it, or the wisdom or of the a woman. woman. Yeah. And even if you see that in Romans chapter 8, I think verse 31, 32, it talks about if women or if people see these bad things happening and they don't do anything about, about it. it, they don't say anything about it, mm -hmm. they don't also refrain from it, mm -hmm. it means they enjoy seeing it happening. Yeah. Or they are sponsoring those bad things happening, yeah. or probably they are part of those bad things mm -hmm. happening because mm -hmm. a bad society does not appear bad from those who benefit from it. Yeah, okay. If uh, Proverbs 14 says that this part, I don't know what number, says that a bad child brings shame to his mother to the parents. or brings tears or something, I think brings shame to the mother and father and brings tears to the heart of the mother. So it's, it's obvious the mother goes, is going to cry the most whenever the child is bad. Exactly. And the gets liberated the most too when the child is good. Exactly. So you know, if when I play, play, play the game good. of cheese, it's the queen that moves. Yes, exactly. So the shame is more on the mother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very good. So if I were to give advice to every mother out there all over the world, because this is not just about African mothers, this is also seen in the Western world, where mothers Legate their duties to some, to some, house helps, to nannies, to and some, nannies. Some, some people, and then they come back. Ahmad say, "How are you doing, Junior?" And he replies, "I'm fine." The child is having nightmare. The child is having disorder, mental disorder. The child is being abused in school on the street by neighbors, and you will stay there. Being abused by the house, 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 house and and you have no clue. You have no clue. Oh, it's oh, even God. good that you have clue and you're trying to shush it one side. Some of them don't have any clue at all what is happening to the child. I belong to a WhatsApp group of women where they said a child was wearing, was crying in class because her shoe was aching, her leg was aching. And they said the mother beat her into the car to go to school that they were late. And while she was in class, the teacher noticed that the girl kept screeching and doing like her legs are paining her. And the teacher called her forth and said, what happened? You hit her leg somewhere. She said, no, that in her leg, in her shoe is paining her. The teacher brought out the, the, the removed the girl's sandals and lo and behold, there was a big poisonous spider in the shoe. And it had been stinging this girl right from the mother's bedroom to this classroom. So by the time they killed the, uh, the spider and tried to check the girl, she was already turning purple. She had mm. the poison. I went to the moon. I right? started going to the moon. She was turning purple, and the woman could not believe when this time she said at home. What did the mother see? She the mother brought her to school. She was rather beating her to stop crying. That she wants to fail, don't to go to school. Mm. These are mothers. Oh. What could they have taken that woman? To find out if the child's leg that is itching is muddle pool, is something strange, or even the spider. She didn't think because she's a bad mother, obviously. Because a good mother would wonder, why is my child uncomfortable? Why is she crying? Does she always cry every morning before school? And you realize the answer is no. What do you do as a good mother? You check what is going on with your child and you do the right thing. 
these are what it takes to be a good mother. So be a confidant to your children. So to your children. And so produce the right influence. Yes, because yeah. if that child was close and free with her mother, she would have said, Mommy, something is biting me. Come on, take it off. It's true. I'll, I'll probably take it off herself. It's I'm true. not afraid the mother will kill her, but she knows maybe when she takes that shoe off, <laughs> she will get the slap <laughs> of her life that morning. Those so things she, happen. So she didn't take the shoe off. So we have this mother. I don't want to talk about the mothers I know growing up as it's a child. That some children are grew up in the house and they grew more to their father yeah. instead of to the mother mm -hmm. because of the influence the mm -hmm. father has yes. okay. and is giving them exactly the attention mm -hmm. and all of that that the mother is due to give but yeah. she will not. Yeah. But then we can now look at to we can look look at the positive part of mothers. Yeah. So let's so take a look at the, the good uh, the mother. What 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 exactly is a typical example of a good mother? Who can we give as an example in the Bible that was a very good mother? Well, Proverbs thirty one has a very very uh, always referring with due respect to our spiritual parents and our mentors. They always use that Proverbs 31 to teach us a whole deal yeah. about the good virtues, the good morals, and the, the good uh, heart of a true mother. I think, be, without belabeling this point very much, our audience, a lot of them go to church. Mm -hmm. A lot of them listen and even follow TV programs mm -hmm. and online stuff and all of that. You, in your conscience, you will know that, no, this thing is wrong. This thing is right. Mm -hmm. So a good mother, not just drawing a timetable for the day, you go beyond your schedules. You get to the point where, just like we said, believe in your children. First thing, believe in them. There are some children that mothers deliver them, and the children is, is a fool. Just like the ones we read in Shakespeare, that is a, <laughs> is the fool, that plays the character of a fool. Mm -hmm. There are some children that the mother deliver, and the children does not, in short, you will wonder how God even put this kind in your womb. And you just have to manage that child the way the yeah, child is. Yeah, because that means it's not the mother's fault. It's not the mother's fault, it's not the father's fault. It's the child who is dumb. It looks, looks like a monkey, <laughs> or looks just so, in short, with defects and deformations. So mothers have to love their children and believe in them, and know that this child is from God. No matter whether how deformed, how good, how fair, or how black, and so on, they are from God. So believe in them. What is not in them, you can influence it. And what is also in them, you can also be able to bring out the best in your children. And so be a good influence to them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people today would have been confiding in their mothers if their mothers truly play that role. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you also have to know that you are the first teacher of your children. And so play that role very, very careful knowing that you are not just a common teacher that does lectures to them. Both in practice, both in doing it. Whether going with them to church or taking them to the prayers or introducing them to the things that will build them. While you do your teaching, tutoring, and grooming at home, mm -hmm. the church has its part. Mm -hmm. The school has its part. Mm -hmm. The community has its part. Mm -hmm. The TV has its part. And so bring all of these ones and make sure that your own influence is the highest. Not leaving the child to watch TV for parental upbringing or watch or this tablets. and oh, yeah, all of that. So you play the most important part. The next thing is for you to also be available to these children. Mm -hmm. That makes you sincerely a good mother because your availability to them brings that closeness, brings that confidence that they can be able not just to fear you as a mother, but rather all know you as a mother. And then they can open up their hearts to you and so help you to also know the areas where they need help, they need attention, they need even medical care yeah. and all of that. It's a whole lot of things. Some of them even learn to cook at home because of the closeness with their mother. Or closeness with the father. Like the male children who are so close yeah. to the Yeah. And then they need to clean the house, to clean the bedroom, mm -hmm. and also to relate with people, mm -hmm. receive visitors, mm -hmm. and be able to reciprocate good things that have been done to them. Mm -hmm. I, I like Nigeria for most part that parents bring up the children and advise the children not to take things from any kind of person and just eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, those are values that we learn at home. If you get back to the African values, yeah, we get back home, we get back to the 60s, the 80s, the 70s, the parental homes that families were together, mm -hmm. children were brought up under a very conducive atmosphere, and they have that distance. 
so that you don't have to be open too much to the society and you don't also have to be open to your friends too much so that mm. you can learn bad influence from them yeah. or anything they even hear that you have done wrong in school the parents will caution you against mm. but then when those kind of societies were being broken by all of these new things that have just come into the society now it's like we have too much to blame yeah. rather than too much to fix yeah. so let's rather get into the section where we have too much to fix the last point is sacrifice no matter how bad our children are let's sacrifice to give them the best so that we don't always carry the blame the Psalms 31 woman was not the one that the husband was sitting at the gate and blaming her yeah. rather the husband was sitting at the gate and praising her because of sacrifice yeah. she sacrifices even when it is not it's not comfortable you have to get up and do the breakfast even when it's not comfortable you have to get permission from work take them to the hospital even when it's not comfortable you have to make your way out and take them to church Oh, all of that so the sacrifice is huge and the sacrifice is that which is needed of every mother Nigerian women we love you and what we are saying here in summary is the sacrifice that we have for our homes the first teacher and the confidence that we have over our children if the mother can do more the society is getting better wow. because if we leave the society the way it is going now just look at how it is going mm -hmm. you yourself just look at how your society is going you will discover that too much is happening at the same time so they don't know which one to hold which one to to, 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 to continue or to advance it's just like we should develop more hands but rather we should develop more talents mm -hmm. and more skills and more bible virtues and values on how to build a better society that can be able to give us the expectation. Oh, thank you very much for these wonderful points you've given to us on how we can be good mothers or better mothers. But I, as you're talking, something keeps crossing my mind. And that is because some men watching this video now, some of our audience are male. All right. <laughs> as a matter of fact, most of our audience are male. And they will keep hearing this woman, mother, mother, a mother, sacrifice. And it was going through my mind that some of them are going to now relax and say she has to sacrifice and make sure the children eat and they don't go to work anymore. I'd like you to give me one word and make them understand because even right here in this devotional, I said something like um, the mother, she caters for all the members of the family, including the father of the house. So that is you, the man, right? She caters for you. Yeah. And not because she is the head, but because she is the mother, the mother and caretaker of the house. But under the supervision, and direction and provision of the herd. So if you want to be a good father, please, it says under your supervision, that means you have to ask her how the kids doing. You have to make sure that when she said they have done the homework, you have to check have they done the homeworks. That makes you also grow close to your own children. Under direction, that means you could say today, nobody goes out for break, no ice cream today, no amusement park this weekend. That is your direction, your orders. They follow it. Children are actually influence more when they have the father figure and they feel exactly. that's a superior exactly. um, um, order. So they tend to obey the mother when they see that the instructions were coming from the father. And again, I said under your provision. Well, because yeah. mothers these days have been left out to themselves. They want to keep themselves. They work, <laughs> they clean, they go to hustle, they cook the food, and the man eats and the children eat. They want to kill our mothers for us, do you? well you are raising a very good point yeah i'm sure we will have a very good in-depth section for the men exactly. but the word of caution for exactly. them here is give our mothers the opportunity to do their best okay because in a peaceful home the mother there is peaceful she performs different it is same like the workshop if the workshop is peaceful the workshop has all the tools needed mm -hmm. you will do your work mm -hmm. you not complain of a broken knife mm -hmm. but then when the home is not more home again and there's someone in that home called a husband husband means the the house bound the one that bows the home so if you don't get to your responsibilities and make sure that you have that bound in your mm -hmm. home you will leave your wife to struggle a lot both in security in provision mm -hmm. and it also in sustainability mm -hmm. yeah. so it gives the woman just too much and we will not be able to be saying they are responsible, yeah, they responsible. and uh, when the men are saying uh, women shouldn't say that what a man can do a woman can do better yeah. probably let us put it that one what a man can do a woman can do later 
Okay. So, women can do sometimes because we have single ladies. Yeah, we can do the sometimes. Single mothers. It allows us so to do it, but they, we don't they can do, do it. the housebound exactly. and then provide what is needed to exactly. bring up an upbringing child or a child that is rooted in the values that is even coming from a single parent home yeah. and will outshine those that are coming from a balanced home. home. Yeah. So, husbands, let's be housebound yeah. and give the women the opportunity to do the motherly work. Perfectly. Perfectly. So yeah. that means we're going to make our time one day to talk about the man. By the grace of God. About the father. By the because grace of being God. a father isn't just donating your sperm to one woman or just <laughs> having your wife giving birth. No, it goes beyond that. It goes way, way beyond that. There are a lot of useless fathers there, whether they like it or not. But that's not the topic for today. Today is the influence of the mother. And I'm very glad um, at what we've shared so far today. And I'm so blessed and so excited because this, this right up here, I had been talking about it. and. It was my pleasure to have you talking more about Thank you. It's my and I'm privilege. sure that you are blessed and I'm sure that you apply most of all those advices to your everyday role as a mother and I'm sure by the grace of God you will have a more balanced home. Your role will be lighter because you understand your role and I pray your children will turn out more better because or turn out better because you will have know how to better guide them and to direct them. And me say to them bye and I'll get to see you some other time because I'm sure they'd like to see you from time to time. Thank you for the opportunity. I will always take it as a privilege to be able to let us build the society that we need together. Wow. Because while we're talking about building a rehabilitated society, a constructed society, mm -hmm. and a better body of Christ, we focus on these values, mm -hmm. knowing that we're playing our own part in the construction of the act of God. Mm -hmm. One day, we're going to be in heaven together, knowing that the people that have changed their lives because of these teachings and all of these things, so that they make heaven unfailingly and have no excuse. Yeah, exactly. They should get it, they should watch it, they should change, they should receive Christ, mm -hmm. they should become better inwardly, yeah. and then become better outwardly, outwardly, and then influence their children much better, and then give the pastor the credit that he's also doing his own part, mm -hmm. the teacher, and also the parents, you know that yes. from the parents to the teachers and the church, all of them are building a society that God really desires. So it's a privilege. Thank you so much. And one thing for the last time is this. You know, when we were growing up, we used to be trained by every mother. Every mother in the end says that when we go out there and we see a mother, an auntie, regardless of whose mother he, she is, yeah. we run away from the bad thing we're about to do. we we'll stop playing rough plays or stop doing the negative things because we know a mother is passing. But these days, Mothers now tend to say, why did you beat my child? Why did you this to my child? Why did you go to my child? The Bible says, oh, look, not one mother trains a child. A mother means a mother. He trained the nation. So when you as a mother sees a child going wrong, don't just really get the child to do whatever he wants and say, ah, she's, the child is uh, Edna's child. I don't care what he does or what she does. That is actually wrong. That is you seeing something going wrong and for your arms. And the Bible condemns that. I'm sure you will learn so much from this video. You can go again and watch it from the beginning to understand more. And for now, it is bye-bye and shalom. So thank you for taking your time to watch this video to just finish from the beginning to the end. I would just like to share a little word with you on the excerpt from Becoming a Marvel, where the topic, the influence of the mother was taken from. So the influence of the mother was taken from the, the devotional Becoming a Marvel written by me, Kifidu Regis. So, and if you have the copy, you can find it, you find it in the edition volume 7 that is the January of World edition on the 26th of January Tuesday 2021 and it says the influence of a mother Kivas Kivas is taking this way then she said I have one small request to make of you the Lord refuse me and the king said to her make your request my mother for I will not refuse you this was taken from first Kings chapter 2 verse 20 where the king's mother came to him to make a request and being his mother she didn't have to ask too much as her influence over him made him say go ahead mother and ask whatever it is you want that is so much for the influence of a mother and another verse taking further reading is in chronicles second chronicles exactly chapter 22 verse 10 i can take us to second chronicles chapter 22 verse 10 where it says sorry i'll take your time a little bit 
22 verse 10. It says, Atalia reigns in Judea. Now when Atalia, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heads of the house of Judea. Atalia here is also a mother. This is what mothers do for their children. They take things to the extreme when it comes to their children. And this way they also have very tremendous influence on the children. Let's see the, what the body of the message says. So it says this way, that the first teacher a child has is the mother. The mother's influence cannot be overemphasized. A good home is the good work of a good mother. The mother ensures that the household is well nourished and clothed. She caters for all the members of the family, including the father of the house, not because she is the head, but because she is the mother and caretaker of the house, under the supervision and direction and provision of the head, which is the father. And it says, furthermore, therefore the child needs both the father and the mother. The mother shapes the way of the child with the help or support of the father. The influence of the mother is enormous and so powerful that it can either make or mar the child's destiny. This must be why we have every day around us the motherless baby's home and not the fatherless baby's home. Because even in the orphanage homes, you will find children whom or whose parents, whose father exactly, are alive but are kept in the home for adequate care and guidance. Proverbs 31 1 to 2 says, The words of King Glimmer, an oracle that his mother taught him to say what are you doing my son what are you doing the son of my womb what are you doing son of my voice this is so because the mother is responsible for to, for teaching the child the way the child should go of the lord and the way he or she should go a mother who refuses to train her child destroys the future of that child and that of many generations as the child grows to become a role model to a certain set of people in life, the child can either showcase and encourage menace or showcase and encourage self-discipline and hard work. Are you a mother endeavor to raise a child that you and the world at large shall be proud of? Let us pray. Father Lord, thank you for blessing me with the fruit of the womb. Help me to raise my children in the way they should go. And so that when they grow old, they shall not depart from it in the name of Jesus and your self declaration if you're a mother watching me right now should be I am a mother I understand the influence of my influence in the lives of my children I shall not spare the rod and spoil the child okay and the part two of this topic the influence of the mother is this the key verse is taken from Psalms of Solomon chapter 8 verse 2 and I will read I will lead you and bring you into the house of my mother she who used to teach me, I will give you spiced wine to drink and the juice of pomegranate. This is Psalms of Solomon chapter 8 verse 2. And the further reading was taken from Isaiah chapter 66 verse 13. I can take us there too. Isaiah 66 verse, verse um, 13. Okay. Isaiah 66 verse 13 it says as one whom his mother comforts who are so i will comfort you and you shall be comforted in jerusalem but well, this is god talking to his people because he understands the influence of the mother in comforting her children the father will say the body of the message says a mother's influence is as paramount as the blessings of a father the mother has been built and designed by god to be resilient and compassionate. These attributes are so powerful that she can sway the children's actions and decisions. We see cases every day of broken homes where the mother feeds the children all forms of deceit and false information just to turn them against their biological father. And the unfortunate thing is in this story is, the thing in this story is this that it actually works for her. This is the influence of a mother. The mother's influence is still part of the reason why we have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob instead of Esau. The mother not being in the picture would have meant that poor Esau would have given, would have gone to the fields, caught his game, and made a sweet savory meal for his father and obtained his blessings. But the case is not so the same today.
This is the opportunity to warn against mothers making a favorite among their children in the family. Many mothers are always found of a particular child and in some cases overlook that child's mistakes and such children grow to become and assume that they reserve the right to behave anyhow they want and behave in awful manners and not be held responsible for it. These children grow into a menace in the society and also become toxic to the family members. And once they do this, they grow in the near future causing trouble in the society. Mothers should use this influence judiciously in making sure that they keep their families united in love, harmony and always teach them the importance of prayer and even stand in the gap for her family. A, model, a godly mother will always make a happy home and be proud of her children. And the prayer here goes this way. Father, I thank you for your word today. Please, Lord, help me to take the right steps in raising my children. Teach me to love them all equally and to cater for my home with love in the mighty name of Jesus. And the said declaration is this. I am a godly mother. I will raise my children in the fear of the Lord and my home is blessed. I use my influence as a mother positively. May these words be manifested in your life today as a good mother in the name of Jesus. So, thank you and see you tomorrow time on our channel. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so now. God bless you as you subscribe. See you soon. Shalom. Bye.